Yes, morning everyone. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the show. I thought I'd do a morning show today, seeing as I'm off this week. Um, I haven't bought any content for the last few days. It's been lovely, to be honest, to chill out in an international break. And now we can start it again because the Premier League football is back. We've built up. We've finished watching England and Southgate and having a pulling our air out or what's left of our air about that. And now it's all time to talk about Arsenal as we come to what is probably being spoken about most as the biggest weekend of the season when it comes to the title race. Liverpool have obviously got Brighton at home first and then on Sunday it's the big one. Arsenal go to the Etihad against Manchester City. And to talk to me about that is one of my favourites from AFTV, the legend that is Mr Chris Hudson. Chris, how are you, mate? Well, right, Dan, yeah, not bad, mate. Looking for a few Easter eggs and uh, three points Sunday. <laughs> Wouldn't it be lovely, mate? Wouldn't it be lovely? Mate, I haven't seen you for ages. I think you should debut on this channel. So welcome to the channel, mate, and uh, good to All see right. you. Um, just quickly, international break. Uh, do you watch that? Do you watch it? Do you think it's rubbish? What, what, what's no. What, why are we doing the friendlies, by the way, in March, when it's like the biggest part of the season? I don't get it. Whoever scheduled it, mad scheduling. But the premier, when they set the fixture calendar in August, all the clubs obviously are told this, and I can't believe they agree to it. It's got to be the one of the worst international scheduling breaks of all time. And no, I don't watch it. What I do, I tell you what a sad person I am. I go on the Sky app, and you get full commentary of all the games. And what I do, I, I just click on it now and then. I mean, I don't see Odegaard in just 79th minute. <laughs> Odegaard replaced 83rd. <laughs> <laughs> but, Mate, it's insane, isn't it? I can't believe him. I, mean, I was watching the overlap the other day. There's another one that's just come out as well. And Gary Neville was talking about Sir Alex Ferguson saying, he used to say, out of the seven lads that went to England, you three are going, you four are injured. This, yeah. this. And that's I, I the don't way you do it. it. The way to do yeah. it, and I wonder if Arteta started to try a little bit of that, which is where I want to start. Now, obviously, this massive game we're going to talk about in a minute at the weekend, but this Saka and Gabriel injury, like, is that a little bit of shit, Asri, from Mikel Arteta? Do you think and just get them out as soon as they feel a knock? Well, I wish it was, Dan, but some people are now. I'm not too sure if it is shit, Asri. I, I think they could be injured, okay. and, that, and that's a bit of a worry. So, I, out of the two of them, I don't want to, I'd rather Gabriel was fit. You know, and I possibly have Saka on the bench as I think Gabriel and Saliba are so important to us. I mean, it's the best centre back power ship in Europe at the moment, let's face it. Right. Facts. It is. And I, I don't know, I think with Saka, I mean, I suppose, I mean, Gabriel, I was hoping that they felt a knock and just went, Do you know what? I'm getting out of here. But no one's actually spoken about the fact that actually. It could be an actual genuine injury. And Martinelli is still a doubt as well because we hadn't seen him since the Sheffield United game. Yeah, no. On his leg, so I know Man City got some injury worries as well. But this just this just basically gives more evidence as to why this friendly in March is absolutely pointless because all it does is it's potentially ruined now. Man City and Arsenal, not just them, but obviously other teams as well, that are going for a top four European relegation and battle. I'll, it's a joke, mate. And on the top of that, you got Didier Deschamps saying there's certain aspects of Saliba's game he doesn't like. I mean, that's the last thing I want is some player coming back thinking with all question marks in his head. And then you got the then you got the other situation with Ben White. We well, I don't we won't go into because we've got to be careful what we say. But that's a joke as well. It is, mate. It is. And I don't know, I, I feel like this has basically come at the wrong time for us. And everyone said it's nice, we're gonna get a nice break. But I like momentum. I like continuing confidence. And when you beat Porto on penalties and when you beat Brentford and when you're going into Man City, I'd rather play them off the back of beating Porto on penalties instead of off the back of international breaks where people are coming yeah. back confused and injured. So that's my thoughts on that. But listen, let's get into it, man. This is a massive, massive game. Before we go into like you know, players and what you do set up tactically and stuff. Who is this the bigger game for? Because it's a bigger, bigger, bigger game, right? But I think people were asking this morning to me, who can afford to lose this game more? Who can afford to draw it? I don't think you could look at it like that too much. We both got to win the game, right? We both want to win it. But where do you stand on if we lose, win or draw this game, Chris? Is like, well, could it be over? Could it be won? No, nah, no. Nah, I've learned. When you're going to retire with so many twists and turns, I remember some of the leagues we won before. When we're now in the running, well, we've lost the game and it's all doom and gloom. And then in the next game, we're back on it. So I'll take a draw. Obviously, a win would be absolutely wonderful. It would be a dream. 
And if we get defeat, I'm not jumping off the top of the E stand. I just have to try and remain calm and hope the football gods look after us, Dan. Yeah, listen, it's one of those. A lot of people are saying that this could be decided this weekend. But I would actually no. argue over the years, I don't think these games ever decide titles. Because for me, when you look back at last season, Chris, people will say, yeah, Arsenal lost against Man City at home and away. But actually, that weren't how we lost the title because we threw it away at Anfield, West Ham and Southampton, that little cluster of games. And then, funnily enough, we could still actually win the title, but we lost to Brighton and Forest towards the back That's end it. of the season as well. So when you look at those games, I would rather say that we'll concentrate on those as opposed to you must win at the Etihad. But there is something to be said about a statement victory here, and this is why I've titled it Make a Huge Statement, because for me, I do feel like it would be. Now, let me give you some scenarios that have happened so far. People talk about Arsenal being mentally stronger, and we've got leaders now, and we've got animals, we've got monsters. I agree with all that. But actually, when you look at us away, we've not managed to go to Villa Park and get a victory. We lost. We ain't managed to go to St. James's Park and get a victory. We lost two huge away games. We went to Anfield and we couldn't get a victory there. And we went to Stamford Bridge and couldn't get a victory. So this is why this one, people are looking at it going, Arsenal got hard fixtures here because they've got to go White Hart Lane, North London, Derby still. They've got to go Old Trafford, Man United still. And they've got to go to Etihad at the weekend. If we can go and win this one, people will then start looking and going, do you know what? Actually, this Arsenal team might have learned here. And that will also put a massive, massive kind of wow and step back moment to the likes of Man City and Liverpool, in my opinion. What do you make of this away fixture, mate? Well, it'd be a massive psychological boost to go to Man City in their backyard and beat them. Because I think I think that affect them. That make them go, hold on. This Arsenal team's serious. And some of the way you reeled off some of those away games, the Newcastle game and the Villa game, I think, with that the terrible VAR and ref decisions. I thought uh, Liverpool, we we got a terrible record there and I, I still don't think a draw was a bad result with Liverpool. The worst one there was Chelsea because, I mean, we should have been beating them. But that, funny enough, don't want to worry her, that was after an international break. Oh. Bloody hell, that's a good omen, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. No, no, you're right though, mate. You are. And um, we should have beaten them. They were there for the taking and we just yeah. didn't turn up on your night. In the first half, we were dreadful. And second half, they were dreadful. You know, game of two halves. But listen, l last kind of question on, on this one. If we win this game, would it remind you of the Mark Overmars 1998 at Old Trafford moment? Great call, yeah. It would. It'd be right. It'd be the same. I went to that. And then after that, Man United never recovered. Yeah, it, it would, but then that was only two horse race then, Dan. Exactly. We could, we could go, if, please God, we go to Man City and win. It doesn't mean we won the league, because unfortunately we've got Liverpool going for it as well. So it's a bit different. But you're right, it would be on a similar sort of, um, what's the word, magnitude of victory. Yeah, absolutely it would. Listen, you mentioned Liverpool. We might as well mention them before we move into this uh, big game. Brighton at home. Thoughts on that one, Chris? A lot of people at Anfield did always fancy Liverpool, and rightly so. But Brighton are a good outfit on their day. Yeah. Do you see anything happening there? It all depends what sort of Brighton turn up. You know, it, they can be the wonderful Brighton, all, but lately they've had some right about. They're on a bit of a bad run in the league, you know. I think it's gone a bit under the. Uh, yeah, agree. No one's noticed. They're not doing that well, but, you know, it's like, but you've got to fancy Liverpool. I think their game is. They've got Man U next week. I think I'm thinking. So I'm hoping they could do us a favour. Yeah, Man United is mad, isn't it? Because what a title race they have to say. Uh, what a say they have in the title race, should I say. It's, it's, it's mad to think that most of the teams that are fighting for this title, all three of us, very similar fixtures, you know. Liverpool and City yeah, they, have got to go pull them away, which is hard. We've all got to play Spurs and Villa, I think. And it's very, very difficult, you know. It really is. And uh, on, on, that, on that Tottenham game, Man City, that still hasn't got a date, has it? And I'm, no. I'm sure Sky... I love to manoeuvre that in for the last week of the season, and oh, and, and you don't want our you don't want to be in the hands of Tottenham because I tell you what they laid down, and I remember when we used to go hand in hand with Man United for titles, and when Man United played Spurs, they just laid down and died. And I f can you imagine the scenario? Say Tottenham are secure of Europe, thanks to our, say they're fifth or fourth, they've got nothing to play for. And Sky arranged that game for that midweek. No thanks. 
No, that's a great point, you know. And this is why we've got to concentrate on our own game and not have to rely on other people, you know. And this is mad to say it, but, you know, I don't think all three teams are going to are gonna go there and win all their games. Because obviously after no. this one, we won't play each other then. So it'll be Liverpool, City and Arsenal playing against all the other oppositions. I don't think we any of them are going and winning every single game. You know, if we did that, Chris, I think we'd get a record because it'd be about 18 games in a row that Arsenal would won. You know what I mean? <laughs> so that ain't going to happen, mate, right? So I've accepted that. But I wanted to ask you, how many how many points do you think Arsenal can, can drop if you want to win this title from now to the end of the season? Well, that's an odd question, Dan. It, it, I'll tell you what, I'll be a man of many Easter eggs. I eat this, Christmas, this Easter. I'll be about two or three, and that's it. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I agree, mate. I really do. And, and uh, even that, I'm not sure about. Yeah, because you know what? I was asked this question about four weeks ago, and I said, I said four. And now I'm thinking that might even be too much. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's that close, man. And and goal difference is massively key for us, but it won't mean nothing if we ain't got the points on the board. So it's going to be tough, man. All three teams going for it. And, you know, all three teams can win it. I must say that. You know, I do think all three teams could win it. And they've got... Also, a, a, a also you got to throw in the uh, Champions League fixtures. we got Bayern. They've got Real Madrid and Liverpool. And that's Atlanta. So if you mix all that into it, and if say we got past Bayern Munich, we're in the semi-final. I think they, we've got a mad run of fixtures as well. It's, it's not looking it's good, man. It's all in the pot. Man City and Real Madrid. If we get, I mean, we got the right nice half of the draw there, didn't we? Jeez. <laughs> but said you got to beat the best, and this is what I was listening to. Sophie, bless her, she was on Sky Sports this morning. Big up Sophie over at Highbury Squad, and she was saying, look. We want to play. We wanted this. And our Arsenal fans have been calling for this for years. So we can't sit there and complain now that we've got a couple of injuries or that we're playing a Man City side that, oh, we hope he's out, we hope he's out, or, oh, hopefully they won't be back yet. Just Let's just play it and see what happens. You know, I, I would rather, if I'm honest, I would actually rather Man City have all their 11 fit and Arsenal have their 11 fit. We go it, see who's the better team. You know, because yeah. that's what we should want. You know, like, they had no Rodri at the Emirates. We had no Saka. You know, I'd rather have both of them played and we actually go and give them a good game and see who's there. Because I still think even if their 11's fit and our 11's fit, I don't sit there and go, I give Arsenal no chance. I give us a chance. I still would, you know, as I do now. So, I do think this one's going to be massive. Um, let's talk a little bit about the team news because we've mentioned a couple of potential doubts in Gabriel, Saka and Martinelli. If that was to happen... Um, what do you think this team news is going to look like, Chris? And how confident are you? Because we have got a few players back. You know, there's going to be Uzin, Jorginho or Party. That's going to be one question mark. I think the front three is going to be interesting now that Jesus is back. Zinchenko is back in this mix now. So, I don't, I don't know what our best eleven is anymore, Chris, which I suppose is a good thing. But the thing is, if I'm going to a Man City, I want, I want my first choice defence. I think if Saka and Martinelli are not fit, I think... Obviously, I want them fit, but if they're not, I think we've got options there. But I want that Gabriel, Saliba, um, Ben White, the key ward, who I really think is fantastic, the Polish boy, and obviously the keeper. I want them intact. And then in the midfield, um, we've got options. I think also the big dads are Martinelli and Saka, where you could play Jesus, you could bring in uh, Party, you could bring in Vieira. We've got options. But obviously, I want them fit, Dan. But I want me back four, mate. I want that solid. Yeah, I agree with you. And personally, I think our best back five with a keeper is Raya, White, Saliba, Gabriel yeah. and Kivior. I really do. And I know Zinchenko would have gone in there before. People might have put Tommy Asu. But Zinchenko for this game, I know he used to play for City. I understand why he might want to use him. But I would put him on the bench and bring him on. Because for me, I would actually look at Tommy Asu... Uh, and Kivior as, as ahead of him because defensively, I think they're much better. I think yeah. when you look at one on one defending and aerial ability, Tommy Asu's your man. Kivior, likewise, as a defender. I don't didn't like him when he was trying to invert as a left back, but now we've got Ben White doing it over the other side. I think he's been quality, Kivior. So I'd keep him in there. Um, I think Jorginho will probably start this game. I don't think Party's played enough football yet, mate. I think it be, might be a bit of a risk for him. Um, he was he was trying to blow you know brush the cobwebs off, but he was giving the ball away quite a bit when he came on a couple of times. So I wonder if Jorginho is the guy with Rice and Odegaard. And I think yeah. for me, mate, 
Avert stays in the nine for me because I've been yeah. impressed with him. And I'll probably go with Jesus. If Saka's fit, obviously I'll go Saka and Martinelli. But if he ain't, then we might have to go Jesus and Trossard either side of Havertz if they're both on the bench, you know, which I wouldn't be against massively no. because Jesus wide is a good player. But um, we've got options now, Chris. And beforehand, we've had to fling on Nelson or Eddie or Vieira. Now we've actually got some good sort of players in there that I think can actually get. And I think squad, squad depth is going to be key, mate. It really is. Well, the thing is, you don't want to you don't want to risk players. No good putting a player on the pitch who after like, twenty minutes goes down, yeah, aggravates the injury, and he's out for three weeks. That'd be you don't want to do that because then you know in midweek we have got Luton. You could, if there's a little doubt about Saka and Martin, you could leave them on the bench, and then hopefully they go full throttle against Luton midweek. You know what I mean? So you just got you got to be careful. Yeah, yeah, massively careful when. You know, I agree with uh, with uh, Moj113 in the chat here saying, Martinelli, it's been nearly four weeks since Sheffield United and he had a cut on his foot. I mean, he must be healed and fit now, Chris, surely. It all depends if it, what's happened to that cut. If it's really deep, it's gone to the bone. You don't know, do you? But it, you've got to be careful what people tell you on Twitter. I understand that. Yeah. But he's the one that they're a little bit worried about, apparently. So, you know, but like, Arteta, you know what he's like? He, he doesn't play, his, he keeps his cars close to his chest. He says, oh, well, I'm not too sure. He trained today. But then suddenly he appears on the pitch. He's just done over, I'll tell you. He does no. play the game. Yeah, no, he, he has got a poke around. Then he's close to his chest for sure. And there's many times that I've thought, oh, he won't see him. And he's starting. And I'm like, what's yeah. happening here? You know what I mean? So that could be the case. Listen, I hope they're all fit, mate. I want to see Gabriel. I want to see Sacco, Martinelli. Um, if party's fit, I play him. Do you know what I mean? If these players are fit, they're our best players. You've got to be putting them in against the biggest game that you've seen. But for me, there's also that that risk of, you know, how fit are they then? You know what I mean? Is he playing me in knock? Has he got injections? Is he got that? I don't want all that, you know, because we it ain't Sorry, just man. Man City. You know what I'm saying? we got to then go to Luton a few days later. Um, so, yeah, I think for me, it's going to be about squad rotation for me now as well because, we. I mean, I did a show on our fixtures only a few days ago and it was mad. You know, like you say, if we do beat Bayern, we got unbelievable amount of fixtures every three days now to the end of the season, which means you can't play the first 11 every week, every game. You've got to switch it around a bit. And I think we've got some positions now where we can look at it. He goes, you know what? Jorginho can come into that one. And Tommy Asu can play here. Zinchenko over this one. And, you know, maybe like Luton, you play Jesus and Zinchenko in that one and you rest the lights of Saka and Martinelli. That, that's the sort of way that we've got to do it now, Chris. And I understand it's ridiculously odd. Like I really do, right? But I do think that it's an absolute must because... You know, if we play this first 11, it's just going to get absolutely bad. And let's be real, <laughs> that's what happened last year. We lost Saliba, we lost Tommy Asu, we lost a couple of people. Saka look completely burnt but out. We threw it away. Thing is, Arteta, he's not a great lover of rotating, though, Dan, is he? No. no. I think if, if he was, I mean, if he was, there was a little criticism of, of him. That's not one of his strong points. He does like to, to stay with the same 11 week in, week out. But it is, he can't do that with this run of fixtures coming out. That would be madness. And we have got some good options. And I suppose, you, I mean, and there's Timber. Is he, could he play 15, 20 minutes as, as the season goes on? I don't expect him this weekend. But you never know. He could be an option there. Yeah, it's a great shout, and he's a player that I was really a fan of in pre-season and for that first game, Community Shield game. I thought he was one of our best players. Yeah, he's wonderful. Yeah, he was, mate, and he's, he looks a talent at 22. I tell you that now, and I don't know if you've seen him, mate, late, but my God, he's been working out. He looks absolute beast. He ripped oh, his no. shirt off the other day, and I thought, whoa, he's really <laughs> keeping himself fit, mate. You know, yeah. nearly looked like me when I ripped my shirt off. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> yeah. I wish, mate. Um, but listen, I, I do think that's a big one, you know. I think that's a big, big um, positive for us. And Tottenham on, as well. On, on the subject of scheduling, I don't know if you've noticed, Tottenham have got a 15-day break before they play us. I saw that yesterday, mate. That's ridiculous, isn't it? And, is that a good or bad thing, though? I don't know, because they might be a bit lost, you know what I mean? Like, sometimes that ain't a good thing. Do you know what I mean? Possibly, yeah, possibly. But it, it, I think the old sub, you know, this scheduling, a lot of it's down to FA Cup ties being scheduled for the same weekend as, as the Premier League games. I thought that was stopping. Fast Armstrong, really? all the Cup ties after the fifth round should be played midweek. And you wouldn't have all this. But yeah, that, that's another argument. That's a good argument to have, though. And I think it makes sense, doesn't it? Because now we're having all these bloody games. Like, we've had Chelsea put midweek now. where really, that should have just stayed where it was. And then they play their cup game midweek. 
you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, that's the way it is, mate. But mind you, I suppose it was the cup final, wasn't it? So I suppose they can't play that midweek. But you get my point. It's a mad thing. It really is. But uh, listen, this game's going to be massive. We've spoken about what, what what matters to it in terms of draws and losses and, and if we win. Um, but I do think with this game, that it's going to be a lot about mentality. And the last thing I want to talk about before we move on to, to other things after this weekend is our mentality going into this game. Now, we've spoken quite a lot about the difference that we've seen in this team. We've definitely seen some um, some kind of tick attack of football under Wenger now turn into a lot more physically strong people. In the box, I see us attacking from corners. We've got Gabriel Saliba, Kivior, Averts, Rice. They're proper monsters. We used to have Cazola and Fabregas. Now, I love them. Brilliant players, but not really someone you want going for Edda, was it, right? So, I've seen that change with this team. Our set pieces look a lot better, Chris, but defensively, we're definitely in with a shout. But I think a lot of it's going to be up here. Do you have the faith that the lads have learned and can get through this mentally, this fixture? Yeah, big time. I think the uh, I think the Porto game. I think that was a bit of a breakthrough for that for this squad, because they had to show some gonads there too. And the penalties, they were superb. I, I think, I yeah, I do. And I think what happened last season, I think that stuck in their head. I don't think they want to go through that again, mate. No. So I think we've improved. Yeah, and, and do you put how much do you put that down to Declan Rice? I know it's not just about yeah. one player, right? But I've been so impressed with him on the pitch, but also off the pitch, mate. How he's handled the media, the way that he's spoken and shows his leadership qualities on and off the pitch, the way that he's just fitted in like he's been playing for us for years. And do you know the biggest compliment I can give him, mate? No one's mentioned the fact he cost 105 million once. Yeah, well, if there's ever such a thing as a 105 million pound bargain, he's it. Yeah, yeah, and also, and you've got to give Arteta, I don't know if you've seen the interview he did um, on Sky, talking about how, how, his, how his role has changed since he came come from West Ham. He said, that basically, Arteta's made him a miles better player. And that's one of Arteta's strong points, actually. I mean, look, look at Havertz. I know some people think, you know, yeah, but for me, he's improving. <laughs> yeah, well, I think he's fantastic. He's done a great. And Rice, Havertz have all improved as players. You yeah, know, and, that's, and that is down to the manager. Yeah, it is, mate. And, you know, Favertz, for me, I thought, what have we bought here for 65 million? It didn't look right. He looked like lack of confidence. And I think that was his Chelsea days, if I'm honest. I'll tell you what, Chris, since 2024, as in the year, the January, since our Dubai trip, basically, he's been one of our best players, I think. I know. Favertz. He's been class, mate. You know, so I can't sit there and say that, you know, I've been like stunned by this signing. He's going to take us to the title and all that. But you can't sit there now and say, well, he's been a flop. What a waste of money. None of that. You know what I'm saying? So I think maybe people could sit there and go, could we have spent 65 million better as a striker? But you can have that conversation all day long. But for me, I think he's he's doing well, Chris Havertz. Well, uh, he's in the recent German internationals, he, he's been their best player. And that tells something. You know, they got a great result over, over the two over the international break. He scored one and he was superb in the other one as well. So, you know, they're all raving about him, about him in Germany again. Because when he was in Germany before he went to Chelsea, he was their big hope. He was, he was the man who's going to lead Germany into the new era. Then he went to Chelsea and he sort of all went a bit wrong for him, really. Yeah, it, it, I mean, when he was at Leverkusen, I wanted him, what, Kai Havertz. So I thought, well, God, everyone did. Exactly. Went to Chelsea and I thought, oh, that's a shame. Obviously won Champions League, but never quite looked a star to me. Never quite looked the one that I wanted. I thought, oh, do you know what? That might not work out. And then I looked at it and then when he came to Arsenal, and I remember saying to Robbie, when we were out of TV, because it happened the day I walked down in the studio and we literally got, it's me, Curtis, Robbie and uh, James. And I thought, what the hell are we getting him for? I remember all of us uh. there puzzled, you know. And Robbie said, look, he must have seen something that he likes in him. And I thought, well, he must have. But what? Because I weren't sure what it was, you know. And I look at it now and I think, do you know what? He's actually really turned up in important moments already. Now, if we do win this league, we will look back to those moments, whether it be the Brentford last-minute goal yeah. that he scored home and away. Obviously, he got a goal at Luton where we beat them in the last minute. I know it was Rice who got the winner, but he was one of those contributors to the goals. Brighton, I think he killed the game off at home, if you remember, yeah. he went and scored that goal. Um, and obviously, he scored Champions League goals as well. So, Big moments and Kai has stepped up and that's exactly what he did in the Champions League final for Chelsea. So I think you can look back now and say he's contributed massively and you won't look back on his signing now and go, what a waste of money no. and what a 
I think they'll have to change the lyrics of the song, 65 million pound down the drain. By the end of the season, I'll, 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 I'll come up with a new song for it, I think. I have to try and say, spend, spend it again instead of what down the drain. I think. <laughs> but yeah, no, listen, it's, it's been an interesting one, I must say, um, because I weren't a massive fan of it. And I did look at our summer and think it was a poor window. Uh, other than Rice. But you look at it now and you think, well, Timber got injured, so that's a bit unlucky. Averts has done well. Ray has really come into it now. It's the next one yeah. I want to touch on quick. And I do think that it was a better win than perhaps I give credit for. And I was a little bit maybe emotional when I was giving it sort of five or six out of ten, saying that we, because we're still, in my opinion, short in a few areas. But, but David Raya and Ramsdale, I want to touch on this. And I hate talking about it, actually, because we're still talking about it now at the end of the season. We all know what's happening. But I don't think people are giving David Raya enough credit, if I'm honest, because he came in and he was a proper sort of, we don't really want him, what's happened to Ramsdale, this is out of order, we're all singing Ramsdale's name, he's making a few mistakes, everyone's getting on his back, see, it's a mistake, it's a mistake. I don't just give Mikel Arteta credit here, I give him self-credit here, Raya, because actually what he's done is proven that his attributes that we needed are better than Aaron Ramsdale. And unfortunately, Ramsdale ain't covered himself with glory when he has come into goal, because he's made a few hours, right? What do you make of it since he's uh, been in the side? Do you think we look a bit more confident at the back, a bit more commanding, or what, do you see a massive I'll, difference? I'll tell you what I see the difference. There's a couple of things. I think the back four are much more relaxed with him. I think I think they obviously they trusted Ramsdale, but I think Ramsdale did make a lot of people nervous. And Arteta, and he did get emotionally involved. To possibly, do you remember? And Arteta did, did drop a little hint after the uh, Porto game, when he, he was asking him about Ray, and he said, nothing affects Ray, he's very calm, doesn't get involved emotionally. And I thought that, that was quite... And another thing, talking about, oh, we all wanted to sing in about Ramsdale, it reminds me a little bit when um, we got rid of Lukic and brought Seaman in. Oh, uh, yeah. Remember? No one wanted him. No one wanted yeah, him. We, he done on him, and they was all singing. And I remember the North Bank singers only won Johnny Lewis right when Seaman's couple of early games. And look how that turned out. Same yeah, that's thing. That's a great comparison, you know. That is a great comparison. Yeah. I mean, listen, I was young. I was born in 87. I think we bought Seaman about 1990. But I remember when everyone right. said, bloody Lukic. Oh, my God, what are we getting rid of him for? <laughs> like, you know, like 80, 89 and that. And then Seaman come in, and let's be real, no offence to John Lukic, but Seaman was miles better. Seaman. Do you know what I mean? So, it's one of those now, and you look yeah. at it and hope that it's the same sort of thing. And I like Raya. I've got nothing against him. He's made a few hours, but I think goalkeepers do. Ramsdale made a few as well. I think it was really the way that it was dealt with was a little bit wrong, in my opinion, at the start, where he just dumped him out, didn't really explain it. And I think if he would have come in and said, look, sorry, Aaron, he is my number one. You will have to fight for your place. I think people would have had a little more respect for him, but to just dump him out like that, it didn't look good. And he might have said oh. that, Chris. I don't know behind the scenes, right? But it's just the way it looked was not good. And I think that's why people lost got the up a bit. Yeah. And also, he come out with that, if you don't mind me saying, so I write a load of flannel when he said, I've got two number ones. And I've often thinking of it. I'll tell you, I was thinking about, I'd like to substitute a keeper, with a goalie with 15 minutes to go. <laughs> no. It was a load of rubbish, wasn't it, really? Yeah, yes, basically, right. yeah. You know, you know, it was poor, wasn't it? But there we go. Listen, um, I want to talk, it's mad talking about the future because we've got an unbelievable <laughs> season of whites, that's right. But I do want to look a little bit into the future. Um, Champions League, we're back in it. We've got through the quarters for the first time, in, which feels like forever, right? But when I look at it now, I wonder how much of it there is confidence-wise in this competition. Because... I've been asking, I've been asked this question. Kenny's been asking me, Lee's been asking me, loads of people speak. What one do you think will get closer to winning, Champions League or Premier League? So let me ask you that question. When this season ends, if we don't win something, which I hope we bloody do, which one do you think will get closer to winning, Chris? Premier League. Okay, why? Because I don't, well, A, because historically our record in Europe is not great. B, Bayern Munich, I don't know the way everyone's... A lot of people just think, you know, we'll, we'll beat them. But if you look at their... I know they're having, having a good season in the Bundesliga, but they're still a quality team who've got more Champions League experience than what we have. Yep. Then if we beat them, we've either got Real Madrid or Manchester City in the semi-final. Same same thing. If it's, if it's Real, they'd be favourites. Man City, anything could happen. I just think... It's a bit of an awkward question. I, I, I've waited 20 years to win the league, Dan. 
but I waited all my life to win the Champions League. So it's a bit of a quandary, really. Yeah, people keep asking me that. I, I have chosen the Champions League this year. I'd always go Premier League normally, but I've never seen us win the Champions League, and I've seen no, us win. You know, I've seen us win four titles. So I look at it now, and I think I want to go and see us win more, win this Champions League. So that's the one I pick. It doesn't mean I'm going to sit there going, "Oh no, we've only won the league." I'm going to be buzzing, right? <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, I think that this this Champions League would just shut a lot of people up because they have always got one over a City and Chelsea. Now, oh, we've won one, you haven't. We've got two, you haven't. And people that do think City and Chelsea are bigger than Arsenal, in my opinion, are deluded. But they've always got that European heritage that we ain't got. And we can just shut them up, you know? I know we won the first cup and the cup with this cup in Parma. It was great. Right? I loved it. But it ain't the same, is it? it ain't a Champions no. League one. So we have to look at that in realistically. Um, but let me ask you this question because a lot of people have asked me this as well. He wins a Premier League and Champions League double this season. The, the unthinkable happens, right? Where, where does it? Where does that rate of all time in, in terms of achievements from, from Mikel Arteta there? Well, it- he become the greatest manager of all time. End wow. of. Wow. Amazing. Well, if, if he was to put the Champions League and the Premier League at San Islington Town Hall, some balmy Sunday in May, where the, you know, when, when we have the coach goes all around the bar, all the pubs are open, he go down, it's the greatest. It would, it'd, be, it'd be just amazing, Dan. I, I, I'll tell you what, mate, I'd retire. Oh, that's it for me, <laughs> You're done. <laughs> I've done. I've done the lot. Mate, the Invincibles, I've done it all. I think it'd be better than the Invincibles for me. And I know it don't stand in the same light in terms of not losing a game and all that. Unbelievable achievement. But you got two of the biggest trophies there is to win, right? What? A statue, people are saying, yeah, I think you'd get one. But I look at it and I think what that would mean to the town. I mean, Twitter would, would have to be cancelled by anybody who don't support Arsenal. Do you know what I mean? All social media. I bet all these Chelsea fans, United fans, Spurs fans, they'd have to quit social media because they wouldn't be able to act it, right? They would absolutely hate it, wouldn't they? But <laughs> seriousness, for me, I do agree. I think it would go down as the greatest Arsenal uh, management achievement because it's the two that everyone wants you to win and you've done it both. I mean, together, that is incredible. Now, I understand that City done three and all that. We get that. But for me, as an Arsenal, just looking at Arsenal, you have to look at that and think, well, Wenger couldn't do that and he was one of the best. Herbert Chapman, you know, all these managers we've had that have been great. That is up there with the best achievement ever. And I know we get ahead of ourselves and we'll, we'll take one of them. Do you know what I mean? Of course we would. But I look at it and I think, what an unbelievable achievement that would be. I don't know that we will. I don't think we've got the chance of it. And I wanted to ask you about the actual Champions League itself. You've spoken about Bayern Munich. Um I'm with you. This is going to be hard, mate. I think people... Are, I was happy to get them, but I was happy to get them because I wanted. I knew it was going to be hard draw. You know, I wanted Dortmund like everyone did probably if you're going to be like that. Now, yeah, yeah. Like, I'd like a really easy draw. You don't really get an easy draw in the Champions League, right? But when you look at it, I, I want to go, try and get this revenge back here, mate. I know it's not the same Bayern Munich of old, but I do think that when we got Bayern Munich last time and everyone laughed and they had a right to laugh after it, now it's time for us to go, don't laugh because we're serious now. We go beat Bayern Munich. I do think we'd have to win like a 2-0 or a 3-1. For yeah, yeah. Confident over in the Allianz Arena. But they ain't got fans at the Emirates, Chris, remember. So we've got to make a massive advantage of that. And I just wanted to get your thoughts on this home game first against Bayern Munich. Well, you can guarantee, A, that Kane has scored. So as far as I'm concerned, I'm going in 1-0 down before I even set foot in the stadium. But I think, yeah, I think we're good enough to beat them. But it's, it's the game in Munich. But I'll tell you what... Gives you a light bit of hope, mate, is that Arteta's record against Thomas Tuchel that when he was at Chelsea was bloody good. Yeah, well, I think you'll find you find we turn them over quite quite a few times, but we must not think, oh, it, this Munich team ain't that good because they are. They still got some quality players, but they've also got if they play Eric Dyer at centre half, we got a chance. Listen, Big time. I mean- well, we've got Ronnie in the chat who's a Spurs fan. He might have to switch off for this part, Ronnie, because we're talking about the Champions League, which you won't know much about, mate. But uh, we must say, we've Eric Dyer at the back. I've always got a chance, mate. I'll tell you that. But okay. Harry Kane's going to score. We know Harry yeah. Kane's going to score, mate. He's a top player and he loves scoring against Arsenal. But I just think we can take advantage in this home leg, mate. And I think if they do play Dyer and Upper Meccano at the back, they're two players that can make mistakes. So we can getting behind them and uh, they ain't been great by Munich you know Thomas no, Tuchel, no, he's tapped out I'm not saying he's done but he is going to go end of the year and it does look like he's done there but he would want to walk away with a Champions League and let's not forget that is the only thing they can win because they're out of the cup 
They're, they're not going to win the league because they're about 11 points behind Leverkusen, I think. So that's going to be done with about nine games to go. And Harry Kane knows that if he don't win that Champions League, he's going to be trophyless again, which is unbelievable, really, to think that he's gone there and he ain't going to win a trophy. I mean, I don't feel sorry for him, but I think you should, really, because that is unbelievable, really, to go to a club <laughs> like that and not win a trophy. It's just mad. It's um, like... It's like he'd go out of Scotland, he'd sign up a cell to the Rangers and Hibs would win the league. It's, um, <laughs> it's, yeah, exactly that, mate. Yeah, it's, it's just crazy, <laughs> isn't it? It's absolutely crazy what's happened there. But listen, um, that is going to be a tough one. I do think that we can win that game. Can we win it by two clear goals to be comfortable in the second leg? I'm not so sure. It's never going to be comfortable at their ground. Let's just have it right. Uh, we're not going to go there and go, oh, this is a nice little stroll in the park. We're through. Um, if we were to get through that game, it would be incredible. And then we got Man City or Real Madrid. Uh, who do you want out of them two? Do you care? <laughs> uh, well, it's a lesser two evils. I mean, Madrid or... I suppose, in a way, I'd want Man City then. I wouldn't want Madrid. No. I sorry. mean, they, yeah, there's not... I'd rather play... If you want to get to Wembley and actually try and win it, I'd go for Man City. But then that's a yeah. proviso. Obviously, they beat Real Madrid. And by the way, I think, unfortunately, I think Madrid will beat them. But that, you know, it's my opinion. Yeah, it's it's not um it's not an easy draw at all. Looking on the other side of the draw, quick, uh, PSG, Barcelona, Atletico Madrid, Dortmund. I've I've said this to judges, and I, I stand by. I think Diego Simeone is going to shit out his way to that final, mate, with Atletico Madrid. Mm. They're horrible to beat. Yeah, funny enough, I agree with you on that. I said, I think. Thing is, Barcelona though have a right rich vein of form, and I don't yeah. know if you know they did they did have let it go three 0 into the weekend, and it could have been more. Uh, in a way, if you want the real dream, if you want revenge, is you, we get Barca in the final at Wembley. That's who I want. We, yeah, and that we beat them, want. and their and their goalie gets sent off after fifteen minutes. <laughs> that is what I love, mate. I absolutely love it. You know, like let's be yeah. real. If we are going to do this crazy double that people say is un un yeah. unthinkable and dream, that we win the league and we, we beat Barcelona in the final of the Champions That's League, right. I'd be beating Bayern 10-2. Do you know what I mean? On aggregate. It would be <laughs> class, wouldn't it? <laughs> but yeah, no, listen, we're, we're dreaming now. But I, I, I do think the Champions League, you've got to have a bit of luck, Chris. You know, like you just said, that sending off there in the final, that kind of ruined the final for us. You know, you've got to have, sometimes that can happen in any game. You know what I mean? I think you need a bit of luck in the Champions League, don't you? Especially, I always remember coming back to London 24 hours later and a referee, it was a back page of the evening stand that said he made a mistake in sending him off, which uh, I made that. it even worse. Do you remember horrible. that? Horrible, wasn't it? Oh, I made a mistake. Yeah. Oh, that's all right, mate. No, we all make mistakes. No, worry about it. You've just bloody cost us a Champions <laughs> League. Like, crazy, wasn't it? But, uh, yeah, I was so proud of that team, man, that year. like 20, 20 minutes from winning that, I was thinking... Come on, just hold on, and, and we weren't able to. But it would be beautiful to go and uh, try and do it again. You're right; I'd love to beat Barcelona in the final. To be fair, yeah. but listen, just win us, win us, winning that trophy would just be, yeah. I mean, I'm 36, and I think I'd retire with you, mate, if we won both. <laughs> uh, that'd be well. I'm 66, mate. So that'd be you, mate. mate. You're not 30 years on me, but uh, listen. I, before we do close, mate, I want to get sort of 10, 15 minutes to chat with you about the future of Arsenal because. Mikel Arteta, I think, is going to be safe, whatever happens. I think, uh, you know, if, if there's a crumble, I don't think it would be a crumble where we're going to finish in a top eight or something and go try for this, right? So I think the Cronkies are quite happy with what Mikel's done. I think the fan base are on side and I think the players are on side. But I do see some holes still and I do think that we're going to have a summer where we can have, add some quality. And I just wanted to get your thoughts on that and where you think we might be short and what you'd like to see happen moving forward with player, players added to the squad, mate. Well, well, the thing is, before we start thinking about incomings, there's going to be a few outgoings. Yeah. And uh, Eddie, uh, possibly Nelson, possibly Party, unfortunately, Smith Rope, Ramsdale, Tierney, Tavares. That's, I mean, but the thing is, that's, that's a lot of money there, you know, in fees and wages. And then bringing in, you're going to need a good backup keeper. Um, I want another utility defender. We need another midfield. That's, and then, obviously, the one everyone will be shouting at, striker, striker. But it all depends what sort of striker. Do you want a striker who's just a plain number nine, like the geezer at Sport in Lisbon? I think I really like him. Or do you... I'll tell you who would suit us. I know it's a bit controversial. I like Rashford. And I, before, because I think he can play wide. He can go through the middle. 
think Arteta would get get Rashford back to where he should be, not that where he is at the moment. You know, it's just my opinion. Yeah, it's funny. That's why I smiled because I, I'm not a huge fan of him, right? And Lee Judges and me were talking about this on his channel. He, he's the same as you. He goes, I'd love to take a punt on him. I think he can get the best out of him, can play wide, he's got pace, he knows where the goal is, and he can play up top as well. I think there's a mentality issue with his kid, man. I really do. Something, I think, you know, we've got to be careful what we say because something might have gone in his personal life. You don't know what's going, what goes on, but, but you look at him last season, he was wonderful for them, you know. He was, I mean, he, 15 goals. Yeah, I don't know what's going on there. I really well, I, don't. I, I'm not doubting the kid's got talent, right? I always have rated him as a player. I think he's been overrated at times because I do look at him and people comparing him to like Man United fans. So we've got Aaron Bappe and all this. I've never seen that level. I've never that seen Thierry so. Henry level, right? But I do look at him and think he's a good player. And I do think that he's never quite hit his potential. He's 26 years old. I don't know how much better he's going to get. But I do think there's a mentality issue with him. And I just don't know that he's got the right minerals, as people like to use that word now, to go and make it at Arsenal. What I will say, though, is that if Mikel Arteta can get something out of him, you might be able to get a player there. But I do think it would be more of a risk than going and get someone who's banging him in. And I don't know if we need any more projects or experiments. I think we've done enough of that now. And I do think that we're in a position where we need to go boom, 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 go win the league. None of this. I'll give him a couple of years with Arteta. He might be half decent. I don't know if we need that. That's all, I'm, that's all I'd say to that. Um, so, listen, we got unbelievable options in the summer, I'm sure. I wanted to take you through the uh, quickly the kind of departments that we have at Arsenal right now. Issue with the goalkeeper we touched on, I think Ramsdale will probably be going, right? Yeah. Uh, I don't know where. I don't know if it'll be Newcastle, United, Chelsea. I have no idea. We can talk about where you, if you want, but what we, what are we going to do in this goalkeeper situation again now? Are we going to go and replace Raya? Are we going to get another backup? Or what would you like to see happen in the goalkeeping situation? Well, I think we've got a good um, young keeper who's on, I can't remember his name. He's on loan at Wrexham at the moment. He's, he's doing really well for him. If, you, you know, if you have three keepers, I think I think I'd bring in an experienced number two. Okay. Not a young number two. And uh, here's one for you. It's a little rumour, but... You know, he might be a load of crap. But getting Chesney back as number two. Wow. But I don't know. Would he come back as a number two? Wow. I didn't even think you were going to say that. That's the name yeah. I thought. I mean, I don't know how old he is now. He must be about 33, and he was saying. But I always liked him. I can't lie. I always yeah. liked him. Um, I know he was a bit cocky and arrogant at times, but I didn't mind him. That is a sort of signing that I would agree with, though. Get someone yeah. like that. I've always said, get an experienced number two. Because I didn't. I didn't like this Matt Turner. I never liked him. I didn't like, you know, the, the all the so many other goalkeepers have had as number two. No wonder they've gone because they ain't been good enough, have they? Right. So I look at it now, and I always thought maybe somebody like a Casper Schmeichel would have been a good number two. You know, yeah. bring in somebody like that. And that's where I'm at with it. And I'm glad you agree with that because you know some people might look at it the other way and go, look, Raya, brilliant, but he's a number two now. We'll go get. Costa from Porto or Michael Mannion or somebody like that that can come in and be the number one. But for me, I think if you was to go and get that experience number two, you'd be all right. Because if Raya was to get an injury or something, you're bringing in somebody who's equivalent to Chesney or Schmeichel, and I'd be happy with that, Chris. Yeah, well, he's, he's 33 and his contract's up this summer and he's going to retire from international football during the Euros. So there are. Yeah, well, there you go. Uh, be wonderful getting back. Yeah, I, I would go for him 100% if that's uh, available to us. Um, let's talk defensively because there's a lot of defenders we have actually got at the club. I mean, some of them are all coming back from injury, but they all kind of play in similar positions. And there's an area that I think personally, I don't know where you're at here, that we're still a little bit short. And that's if Saliba gets injured, mate. Because I think if Gabriel gets a knock, we'll miss him. But Kivio can come in. We've got left-backs at the moment. Kieran Tierney, I think, will be sold. And Tavaj, I think, will be sold. But we've got Kivio, Tommy Asu, Zinchenko and Timber that can all play there. And at right-back, we've got Ben White, Tommy Asu and Timber that can play there as well. But right-sided centre-back, I do think there's a potential there, Chris. I think that's why they're looking at that. You'll know his name better than me. The one that plays for sport in Lisbon. Yeah, Diamande. I yeah, really he's, like I watched him in the African Nations and he was a right unit. I so, like yeah, that, lot, yeah I don't know. Uh, 19, yeah. 20 year old, I think he's got unbelievable potential. He looks like a rock and he can play as well. So, that's the one I'll be looking at. And I hope, I hope the rumors are right about that because I think him and Saliba there, that is an cool. incredible, like, let's be real. Like, it don't matter, right, if you get a knock there. Because, you know, at the moment, if Saliba goes down, we got, what are we going to do? We've got to have to play Ben White there 
and then play like Tommy Asu at right back or something, which ain't shocking, but you'd rather have someone at centre half yeah, like the same level. A hundred percent, a hundred percent, mate. So fair play. Uh, midfield's an interesting one because it might be some surgery. I don't know what's happening with Party or Jorginho. I've no idea if we're keeping them both or if we're selling them. Uh, El Nene will go, and Lukonga will go, but box to box and defence in midfield. Where are you at? Do we need what? What do we need in that midfield for you to be added in the summer? I think we know we need another defensive midfielder. The one that Real Sociedad is always connected with us. So uh, but by yeah, by I tell you, I'm gonna throw, here's another one. Left field, Villa have got to sell him for um, financial reasons. Is there Ram- you know Jacob Ramsey? Oh yeah, yeah. Now, before he got his injury, he's one of the best young players in the Premier League. He was on the verge of the England, but I've not, he's not getting in the Villa team. And apparently, there 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 is a good young player. Once again, you know, I know it might be a project signing. So I'm looking at players that Arteta can improve. And I've, do you mean, I don't know if you agree with me, Dan. He was a bloody good player at Villa. Very good, mate. Very good young player. And I he's think young. he's got potential to you get know. better as well. Um, I like the kid. Uh, and he ain't been playing as much. I think he's had a couple of injury knocks. But yeah. they've got a good side in there, Villa. You know, they like McGinn. They like Douglas Luiz, Kamara. And he ain't There's really another one. looking, you know. Douglas Luiz. I'll take him, Dan, from Villa. Very good player. Very Dan. Yeah. Very good player. And I think we've been linked with him a couple of times before, haven't we? So I like I like the look of that. Um, listen, the one that would excite me, people might laugh and think it's unrealistic, but I think we could get him. Uh Frankie De Jong, mate. He is an absolute bowler. He drives forward, he's got unbelievable ability on the ball. Barcelona are in problems financially, and I know for a fact when he came out in his interview a couple of years ago and said, Mark over Mars is the guy I replicate me on a career on. I've played for Barcelona, I've played for Ajax, there's only one more team. And that is us. And I just well, wonder yeah. if we could try and tempt him, you know. Well, what would you make of that? That would excite me, well, Chris. He'll see, I'll buy your hand. He's top quality, Dan. Yeah, all the, he, yeah, without hesitation. Yeah, he's the one that would excite me most. And, you know, Zuba Mendy, Douglas Luiz, I wouldn't be crying about him. I think they've got good good potential. But that De Jong is, that would take us to new, new levels if we had him, Rice and Erdegaard. I mean, that well, would be... A few- also... I think they've got big plans for uh, Nathan Nanwari, who's in the youth team at the moment. He's he's going to sign his contract. He's going to get pushed into the first team squad next year. And yeah, uh, Arteta has asked Odegaard to be his mentor, apparently. So so I think he'll get get a chance next season. There's a few others in the youth team floating around, but, you know, not as near as what he is, I don't think. And we want to see that, man. You know, I'm a big fan of Winery from what I've seen. And I like that Lewis Skelly guy as well. I think yeah. he looks like a good player. Um, Cozy Dubry is another lad on the wing who's done, doing well from what I hear. But I look at it and think, yeah, do you know what? Fair play, because I think this Winery kid could be something special from what I've seen. Um, and then we go, of course, to the big questions of does Saka need cover and who do we go for up top? And I think we've got a couple of options there, and there's a couple of r- r- rumours. I like Pedro Neto. I know he gets injured a lot, right? I get that. But I think he's an absolute baller. And I think him behind Saka would be fantastic cool. signing. And the other striker I like that ain't been spoken about, but has only just been, is Alexander Isak. Again, someone who's injured, which would put me down a bit. But I think Pedro Neto and Isak, Premier League proven, would be gettable. I think we should try and do that. I know Tony's been mentioned and obviously Victor Jokeres over at Sporting Lisbon as well is another guy that I do quite like the look of. But where are you at with these two positions, Chris? Well, with you, Neto and Iziak was just made for Arsenal. I but, agree. It's the, but the thing is, it is that, is that injury, especially when his injury record is awful, the boy at Wolves. I mean, he's, he could be out for the season again. So I'll say yes, Dan, but I wouldn't be laying big money on him, mate. Sorry. Yeah. I, I'm with you, and a lot of people are saying that Isak and Neto would be great, but would it be less of a risk to go for somebody like Nico Williams and that Jokeres because they're you know not as injury prone? But the problem you got with that is Arsenal. I've had that. I've, I've, how many times years have we had players just getting injured? I mean, like Party, he's not got one injury at Madrid. He's come here and he's been awful injury wise. Tommy Asu is another one, you know. Yeah. Oh, Tierney, all these guys that keep getting these long term injuries that never got injured at their places, you know what I mean? So, a risk it's a risk anytime you sign someone that can get injured, you know what I mean? But you are right, I suppose. Pedro Neto, this kid, I mean, he's an absolute baller, but he just can't stay fit for more than like six, seven games, can he? You know, and it's sad because he is a quality footballer, 
Yeah, when he when when he when he's on it, mate, he's unplayable. So then yeah. there. No, he is, mate. He is. And listen, you're right, we've got to get rid of some players. I agree with you. I think Eddie and Reese Nelson are two that'll probably want to go and play first team football. I think we've got to look at getting rid of the likes of Laconga and Tavares. I think Ramsdale and Tierney are two players that I think we'll want to make a move. And Cedric and El Nenny obviously going to have clear contracts up. I wanted to talk to you about two players that people would like to see do well that might have to leave. And that is, of course, Charlie Patino and Emil Smith-Rowe. Now, these lads, when they come through, everyone thought, oh, these would be special. And I don't know if it's going to work out for him, Chris. So what's your thoughts on these two, mate? Well, I'll tell you, Patino's been a little bit unlucky because he's gone to Black... He went on loan to Blackpool and the manager there played what Tony Pulis football. So then they picked, then they sent him to Swansea. Then Swansea sacked the manager, and, and guess what? They've employed a manager that plays Tony Pulis football. So his two <laughs> loans haven't his two loans haven't worked out that well. I won't, I still think there's a player there, but perhaps he might need to go on loan somewhere else. But then he may not want to go on loan. He might want to leave. And the, the big saying this is what most of the fans is Smith Rowe. I mean, I. Do you mean when he broke in? He, he basically carried Arsenal. Him and Saka, yeah. that's obviously where the song and his career hasn't progressed. And I, I do find it quite sad. Injuries. Uh, is he is he fit enough? But the thing is, Arteta don't seem to trust him, Dan, does he? Um, he doesn't bring it. No. If he brings him on, it's five minutes here, six minutes there. And I think I mean the boy actually wants to play with Arsenal. But so the answer to that is selfishly, I'd want him to stay. But for his own career, I think he should move on, you know, and get playing somewhere. Unfortunately, I agree. Um, and it's crazy to think that because when he he come through, I thought, oh, I love this kid. I love everything about him, you know, brilliant. But I look at it now and I think I've noticed Nelson's got more of a chance than him. Eddie and Ketty has got more of a chance than him. Fabio Vieira's got more of a chance than him. And that's without mentioning Avert Saka, Martinelli, Jesus and Nerdegaard, who obviously are going to get ahead of him. Um, I think this kid needs to play football, Chris, at the age of 23 now, and I think he will do. Likewise, Reese Nelson and Eddie Nketiah, I think three of them have come through the youth academy and they'll all have good careers. But I don't quite think it'll be at Arsenal. And I think, you know, Eddie could line up at Palace and bang him in. I think Reese Nelson could go to somewhere like Wolves and do well. Yeah. Likewise, Smith Rowe, I think if he went to an Aston Villa or a West Ham, I think he might have a good career, you know, because I think he'd play in their side. But I do look at it now and think it's a shame, but I can understand why he might have to go it's elsewhere. The, I mean, it's not the same comparison. He hasn't had the same man. I mean, it's a little bit like Stuart Robson, Dan. Do you remember? Oh, OK. Yeah, fair play. Well, I, I was gutty when he left. But he, his career at Arsenal started like that. Then he got some really bad injuries and he, and he was never the same. So it's just yeah. a little bit of a parallel there. Yeah, it is. I mean, when I looked at Smith Rowe, when he came through, I thought, yeah, there's something about him I quite like. And I remember he went on loan to Leipzig and he got an injury, but he looked good. And then he went to Huddersfield and really yeah. toughed him up. And then he got another injury. And then when he came here, I thought, I don't know if this kid's going to be an injury-prone player, but he was unbelievable when he brought him in, I tell. Um, and I compared him to Jack Grealish in terms of the way that he plays because I feel like he's very similar to him there. And I remember saying, when Jack Grealish was this this young, he weren't as good as Smith Rowe. And he weren't. No, he wasn't. Right? And that's why I think if he was to stay and get actually game time, I think he could be a phenomenal talent for a, for a team. So it is going to be a shame, but I do think he will move on. And I know for a fact, I know people that know these two kids, all three of them, Eddie, Reese, and, and Emil, they love the club, mate. They absolutely love Arsenal. You know what I mean? They love, they love it with all their art. So it will be hard for them as well to have to leave, you know, but they've got to think about their careers, haven't they? You know, not, it don't always work out. So and, what... Um, well, wouldn't it be a great way to end the season if they could get a medal? In it? They oh. do. I think they've all qualified for a medal this season. You know what? What end end their yeah. Arsenal career with a Premier League medal or, or Champions League medal? It'd be wonderful for them, wouldn't it? It would be, mate. It really would, and and I think that's what they deserve for sure. So let's hope that we can do it. Listen, um, before we wrap up, mate, um, I've got to ask you for a score prediction at the weekend. Uh, what do you fancy? <laughs> um, I'm going to go one all. And I'm going to tell you, and I reckon there'll be a lot of controversy. We've got a referee from Manchester and we've got a geezer on VAR who's a Liverpool supporter. Uh, and I just know something, uh, something controversial will happen. But I think we're Nick a one all day. Interesting. Yeah, I can't. Anthony Taylor, I mean, wow, from Manchester. And he's now in charge. This is brilliant, isn't it, really? And then VAR. 
What does he yeah. want? Who knows what he's, he wants? <laughs> he's ter- I tell you what, he's but he is one of the worst officials. I, I can reel off the games that he's cost us. Palace, VAR, um, New Villa this season, numerous others. He's a nightmare, Dan. I agree with you, mate. I agree with you. And listen, we ain't gonna be able to we ain't gonna be able to rely on them and VAR to win us this game. We're gonna have to go and do it himself ourselves. So that's for sure. Um I'm gonna agree with you with the um with a draw, but I'm gonna go two two. Um, no, all right. I don't think we'll get the job done because I just think Man City will just they'll will prevent us, mate. They're they're too good. Um, we could beat them. Don't get me wrong. We can get in behind them, mate. I've seen Marcus Rashford get in behind them. I've seen Chelsea give him a game this year, but I do think it'll be a difficult place to go and pick up three points, and they'll make it difficult for us. Which is why I think it'll be two two. Now, like you said, I don't think I'm going to leave at two two and go. Well, that's it for the title. We're done. No, no way. Right? No way. But. Um, it will be one of those, oh, when are we going to beat him? Type, type feelings, do you know what I mean? Like Anfield, I suppose. It's a bit like that like Anfield. It's like, oh, when can we go there and pick up this win? You know what I mean? And they're two grounds that, let's be real, the reason they're bloody hard to pick up is because they've got two world-class managers and two world-class squads, you know? So sometimes you walk away from it and you, and, and you feel like, ah, oh, we're not beating them. But you can't with Liverpool, Anfield or Man City, the Etihad. You just can't because not many people go there and win, you know? So we've got to be real about it. We've got to be realistic. I do think we can get three points, but I am going to go for a draw. Um, oh. You know, and I also don't think that Man City's players are as badly injured as some people might. Like. No, I don't. You know what I mean? I wouldn't surprise me if KDB and Haaland are fine, and if yeah. Edison's in goal, and if Carl yeah. Walker and Stones are back. You know what I mean? Like the same goes for Arsenal as well. I hope, but um, I don't think it'll be it'll be a good one, man. That's for sure. But uh, listen, Chris, absolute legend, mate. Um, to talk to you. Thanks so much for jumping on, mate. Yeah. Uh, all right. Anything coming up? You up on the old, on the channel soon? Are you? I know you're on Supporters Club quite a bit. Are you going on that? Yeah. I'll go. I like going on that with Turk to It's I quite enjoy that. It's quite quite yeah, a good uh, little gig. It is a good gig, mate. He's a good old boy as well. So that's great. I always do watch that with you and Curtis or you and Shirkish or Shiroi, whoever's on it. So big up to you, mate. Make sure you go follow Chris Hudson at Twitter, people. Make sure you go and uh, keep in contact with what he's doing on AFTV. Uh, make sure you do us a favour here, like and subscribe as well. We're very, very close to reaching 18K. want to try and get the 20K if we can as our next target. So let's make sure that we do that. Um, I'll be back later on on Lee Judge's uh, channel. We're doing a, a, a bit of a chat with his old Spurs boys again for this weekend. So doing our North London chat which will be good later on at half past eight so make sure you head over to Lee Judges TV for that one and uh, we will see you next time my thanks to you Chris big up to yourself mate thanks for coming on and uh, right. big up to everyone man make sure you hit the likes people as you go out we'll see you next time take it easy yes Judges hello Dan how you doing you alright well, right? I'm actually watching the football mate this Surfshark VPN is a lifesaver mate you can watch the football with a dodgy Wi-Fi even at the Emirates when you've got a back, big crowd there and everything like that watching the football unbelievable easy to set up well, it must be if you've done it mate oh, very very funny even abroad you can like you can watch all your favourite programmes it's like being at home mate and that's exactly what you guys can do too click the link in the description for Surfshark VPN <laughs>